Welcome back to Dark Corner Studios. My name is Aiden. Wait a second. I don't think I'm doing this right. Now before we begin, I should say Isovox did send this to me to keep, though they don't have any say on my opinion for this video. This is not a showcase video. This thing is going to be put through the paces like everything else on this channel. So, what in God's name is it? Is it a fancy helmet? Yes. Optimal hiding spot for hide and seek? No. Your body hangs out the bottom. I lost that round. This is a voiceover booth for your head. It has two main purposes while doing that job. Reducing the reflections of your voice and stopping them from re-entering the microphone and reducing the level of ambient sound from your surroundings. Now, before we get into all the testing, well, let's look at the build quality. It does really feel premium. There really isn't anything in the whole package that comes off as cheap. The fabric in the finish is top notch, and honestly, it's really well put together. Now, speaking of put together, it took me about 10 minutes my first time, and honestly, after that first time, it goes up in around five minutes tops. Now, it's very sturdy, and with the base that I selected, there are absolutely no tipping concerns. Everything is really well thought out, including the hole for the XLR and even the included LED light for reading copy. Seriously, this thing offers a full setup. But before we put it through its paces, let me introduce you to the other star of the show. This is the Isomic. It's meant to be used along with the Isovox. Of course... Other mics do work in here. In fact, there's a whole approved list of mics, even some of the affordable ones. Now, we'll get to those in a few. But why this microphone? Well, this being a premium product, Isovox wanted to pair it with an equally premium mic. And for that, they went to Erlen Mics. Now, Erlen Mics is known for developing somewhat distinct microphones that are both gorgeous and responsive. It is a condenser mic with the cardioid polar pattern. Now, it has a frequency range that might sound a bit out there. It's 7 hertz to 87 kilohertz, which I know the human ear can only pick up 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and most interfaces, pretty much the same thing. But I guess if you got it, might as well flaunt it, right? Now, I really have no way of testing to confirm it, uh, but it's probably the only way to record a dog whistle, if that's your kind of thing. Max SPL is up to 122 dB. Sensitivity is 23 millivolts per Pascal at 1 kilohertz. Dynamic range is 115 dB. Signal to noise ratio is 87 dB A weighted. And I just have to tack this one on. The weight of it, it's only 206 grams. It's like a feather. As for the build quality of it, well, it's made out of aircraft aluminum, so yeah. Now, probably the first thing you're going to notice here, the capsule isn't circular, it's triangular. Now, once again, I hate gimmicks, and I instantly went to work to figure this out, to see if it's just a dumb selling trick. And well, it's, well, it's not. It's designed this way to limit the resonance of the diaphragm. So as your voice makes the diaphragm move, the triangular shape resets quicker, which leads to a crisper signal. Now... The proof does come with performance, and we will see that in a bit. But if you want to know more about the triangular capsule, I'll link to some videos below. But before we do all the tests on the microphone, let's see how the Isovox tests in different environments. Why are we standing in the middle of my kitchen? Well, for a couple of reasons. The first one is, is this is the second worst sounding room in your house. Like, flat out. There's... Only the bathroom that's worse than this, and well, this whole setup, I'll actually put up a picture of my setup. I wasn't going to be able to cram into my bathroom. It's actually quite small. So let's actually take a listen at my Rode NT2A in the middle of this kitchen and how it sounds. You can hear how reverberant it is in here. And beside me, we have the Isovox. So we're going to compare the sound of me talking in this room here and in there. So... We now know what it sounds like here. Let's take a look at what it sounds like in the Isovox. Now I'm in the Isovox and I'm actually talking in my kitchen. Now I'm gonna actually show you the video that's being taken off my main camera just to prove that I'm in the kitchen. Just in case there's any naysayers out there, 
This is me in my isovox. What do you think? The difference between me here and in my kitchen is pretty vast. And this is the worst room possible to be doing this in. I can hear just a little bit of my reverberant voice outside of this box. And the fun thing about that is it just, it might get out a bit, but it won't quite get back in. Not enough for you to actually be able to tell much of a difference. This is the Isovox in a kitchen. Let me know what you think down below. Time for the ambient noise test. This is me talking into the microphone. And you can see in the video directly outside, I have my NC2A pointed directly at the Isovox. And this is the sound deadening that happens between the inside of this box and the outside of the Isovox. What do you think? Now we're going to do the ambient noise test and I'm going to gain this microphone up as well as the one in here with my air conditioning on. I'll gain up about 10 dB just so you can actually hear the differential between the two. Now I'm in the box and I have the air conditioning going. All right, so let's quiet down. We're gonna gain this up probably about 10 dB and see what it sounds like, okay? That's the ambient noise reduction inside the Isovox. That's what the Isomic, by the way, a super sensitive microphone. Now let's do a whisper test. And this isn't something that I think Isovox is expecting, but they told me, check this out. It's really cool. When you whisper into the microphone and then you gain it up, you're going to see something pretty special. So let's do that. This is an ASMR whisper test in the Isovox. This is Aiden Wolf. This is the ASMR test for the Isovox and the Isomic. What do you think? By the way, my gain is still set to zero. All right, now time for the wife test or uh, the female voice test, as I've been calling it on this channel. I have my lovely wife standing in for the female. Uh, say hello, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. <laughs> okay, so uh, tell us about the experience of sitting with your head in a box. I mean, I feel like the thing is, is when your head is in the box, we try to encourage people to think outside the box. And here I am thinking inside the box. It is very quiet. Okay. It feels like I'm stuck in a box. You you kind of are. Thank you for showing up to do this. Uh, is there any other thoughts you would have for our viewers? Hmm. What does it mean to think in the box or out of the box? I was going to use uh, Alice in Chains' man in a box, but uh, woman in an ISO box didn't quite roll off the tongue as well. <laughs> Anyways. I feel like my head is in a box in a recording studio, but yet it is in a box in our basement. <laughs> Which is kind of a recording studio of sorts. <laughs> it's a YouTube studio. All right, that's it for the wife in a box segment. Now, before we bring other mics into the equation, let's close the book on the ISO mic. I like the mic. It treats the frequencies smoothly. And honestly, I even liked it on my wife's voice. Of course, it is tuned to deal with some of the boxiness of the Isovox, which is inevitable with a small setup like this. I like a bit of an EQ on it. Now, it might differ for your voice, but I find I don't have to take as much out of my mids dip around 250. Other than that, I think it's a fantastic mic. I look forward to using it on some voiceover gigs. I think it's one of the best sounding mics that I own. Okay, there's one really cool thing about showing another type of mic in here. If you can't fit the shock mount in, or perhaps it's just annoying to get everything switched out, this might be your best friend. Of course, it's not going to fit every mic, but I'll be damned, it does fit most of mine, and it's a simple clip that holds your mic. And yes, it actually holds it. That's so cool. So let's find out how the AKG P420 sounds in here. Okay, so this is the first other mic that I'm testing in the Isovox. And for this one, I went with the AKG P420. Now I was gonna go with the P120, but I figured, well, why not? It's only actually an extra $80 or 90 bucks more than the P120. So this is the P420 uh, on its cardioid setting. There's no pad engaged, nothing like that. 
It's just straight up standing in front of me, and this is what it sounds like in the Isovox. I'm not putting any EQ on it. I'm not doing any compression. All of this audio is straight up, straight into the computer. What do you think? The P420, an under $200 microphone in an Isovox. What do you think? Okay then, this is the TechZone Audio Products Stellar X2. And this is how it sounds in the box. Now this mic is supposed to kind of be a U87 or U67, I believe it is. Uh, it's modeled after the K67 capsule, if I recall. It's been a while. I love this mic. This mic has been in my life for quite some time, and it's probably one of my favorite go-tos for doing voiceover, which is why I really wanted to have it in here for this test. It's going to be an interesting view to see. This one's, uh, it favors the low end. So let me know what you think. What do you think of the Texone Audio Products Stellar X2? Okay, this is the discussion where things can get a bit awkward. I've seen it all, lots of people saying in overpriced or it seems a bit much. Okay then, you have to remember that proper sound treatment isn't cheap. And while some people will tell you that a bunch of Orlax jammed into a cardboard box is fine, well, it's not just fine for some jobs. You see, this solves a bunch of problems. For a lot of voiceover people, the answer is a whisper room or studio bricks, and nobody says those are overpriced. Now, there are large and wildly expensive voiceover booths that work remarkably well. The problem is... Not everyone can afford thousands of dollars it costs to buy one, not to mention the added expense of treating the inside. Also, not everyone has the space for a voiceover booth in their home or apartment. So for those people who can't go all in on a VO booth or for the apartment dwelling VO talents, this is an amazing alternative. Not only do you get the soundproofing benefit of a booth, but it works on both ends for the metalhead screaming into a mic at 2 a.m. It can be put away easily and set up within minutes. But that one question still remains. Who is buying this? And really, who should buy it? Well, this would be going to working professionals who need the added flexibility. People already making a paycheck that can justify the purchase to upgrade their setup. A great example would be an audiobook narrator. This would be a massive upgrade to the blanket forts or even the moving blankets strung up around your house. Not only does it do the job better than that, but it does look a lot better than a bunch of moving blankets. All right, I guess time for the final thoughts. I really like this thing. I can't see a downside in my studio to having it. That's probably the best thing you can say about this thing is there's no reason to not have one if you're a working professional in the voiceover industry. I find it's a really cool experience to record in, and this might actually get me back into doing some audiobooks again. It's a great conversational piece also. Everyone wants to stick their head in there. And it does deliver its promise. It's a little voiceover booth for your head. Honestly, I think the best selling point to it is the fact that it allows you to take it with you. Now, granted, it doesn't pack down super small, but it does pack up and go into a trunk. Let's see you do that with a studio bricks or a whisper room. Also, as the saying goes, if it's good enough for Laura Jane Grace of Against Me, well, I guess it's good enough for me, isn't it? Let me know what you think down in the comments. What do you think of all the tests? Did I get them all? Did I miss any? Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you know what to do. Cheers, and I will see you in the next video.